So we're going to go from one example, which is organizationally based, directly to one which is artistically based. Well, the example we're about to go to next is from an artist directly. Uh, and that's John Osario Buck. And John Osario Buck is his own subject of social experimentation. After graduating from the School of the Museum of Fine Arts in 2003, he has been engaged in developing his work away from the process of creating singular autonomous art objects and towards a method of creating works or projects that may produce objects but are more conceptual in process. His work is a hybrid of genres, uh, creating performative structures that take on issues of displacement, sustainability, and self-reliance. Recent projects have included designing, building, and living on a raft in Boston Harbor um, to creating a community pirate radio station, constructing a traditional cane bell house in downtown Omaha, as well as a variety of mobile shelters. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to John. Um, I'm going to be showing you a project that I uh, mentioned earlier, the uh, raft project that a colleague and I lived in Boston Harbor for a few weeks. Uh, the title of the work is, Will the Last Four Point Channel Artist Please Turn Out the Lights? <laughs> and uh, both uh, my colleague and I, Matthew Ward, were being evicted from our studios in the Four Point area, um, as long as a lot of artists were being displaced. Uh, so we decided to create a project that um, would territorialize unused space in the Four Point area and that we would inhabit uh, and use as our living studio. Uh, at the time, there were a lot of studios being built that were like higher end, uh, that were actually called uh, New York style lofts. And, uh, and we know it's like Moomin. So we decided to uh, create New York, New York style loft wraps. And we eventually did make a film uh, about this and made it into an, an infomercial. Um, so we uh, spent about five months designing and building this raft and then moved out into the harbor for a few weeks. And um, because it was a very public act, um, there's like about three or four bridges in the area where people could see us literally living day to day. And so we wanted a way to get in contact with them. So you can see there's actually a website on there. And because it's urban space, we were actually able to communicate with people. They would come down and actually you know, take them on raft rides. And they would like, just talk about the area and the history and the situation that was going on with the artists. Uh, it wasn't necessarily so much that we were protesting that this was happening. Artist societies transform. They pop up one place. They gentrify. They move somewhere else. But we just wanted to highlight the resourcefulness of artists of, of all kinds um, that you know they they actually move into places and do what needs to be done often with very little material uh, as with the raft most of it was recycled or found material I think the only thing we bought was a pontoon that floats on you can see it's cast uh, PVC sewer pipe um, and so essentially what we were trying to do was make it as a, a livable studio. We didn't do things the normal that people would do. We would order pizza. We would meet the pizza guy at the bridge. Uh, we tried a variety of different um, projects of like making things, uh, things you would find to rely on. Uh, pigeon bones and things like that we made objects from or we planted a flag around the, the harbor. Um, so I'm going to just conclude with a couple other images here. This is a Haybill house in Omaha. And again, the same thing, moved into an area that was unused started building community for people um, and trying to like highlight just the amount of like uh, sustainability and material use of objects. And these are a couple of the other projects that have been through from the context of uh, Project Bear Grass. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.